let's get it going. Shalom Chavarim, I'm Stephen Bernoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We started on live stream. Those of you that have joined us there on live stream, there's a, close to 100 people that were there a little moment, a moment ago there. Uh, but here on Israeli News Live on YouTube, there's going to be thousands that will be viewing this. Uh, we had to backtrack a little bit. We've got to get back into this story here. Uh, what's going on? Let me get you right into uh, the whole events there. Putin fears an imminent war. Uh, this whole story started, uh, for, for us, it started a couple of days ago as we saw that Kiev was amassing troops there on uh, the border there with Donbass and Luhansk region there in eastern Ukraine. And we know it's destabilizing the area. Putin is very concerned that this could turn into a massive war uh, that would destabilize the entire region, as he has stated in the news sources already. We brought this out to you uh, two days ago. And it has only gotten worse since then. And we're going to try to bring you up to date on these things as they're happening here. Uh, and we're going to have to break away from our uh, screen that we have here in the background uh, to show you things that I didn't get a chance to put in there because I put in the wrong uh, piece there on the screen uh, for you there inside of the um, uh, PowerPoint presentation here that we're using on, on the wall here. At any rate, though, uh, Putin, according to the Moscow Times, uh, came out uh, two days ago that cancels all of his meetings for, uh, for, the, for the rest of the week. Russian President Vladimir Putin has canceled all planned uh, engagements for the rest of the week, the RBC newspaper reported Wednesday, citing Kremlin sources. The reason for the cancellation is, is as yet unknown. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov told journalists that none of Putin's scheduled trips had been decidedly confirmed. Of course, make an excuse for the reason why. Now, I personally believe that the reason why the president uh, has canceled his appointments is just like it was back in 2014 when he disappears for 11 days and everybody is saying, oh gosh, Putin's dead, or oh, he ran off with his lover, or whatever the case may be. We did a news report Putin prepares for war and got a letter from the Kremlin stating we were the only journalists that got it actually right in that case there. I believe that the same thing is happening again, only this time he has been in contact with both uh, the French president and the German chancellor Merkel there trying to get them to intervene in Ukraine to stop the buildup of forces there uh, that could create a massive war. Then I get an email from one of you, um, our brother, sister there, that sent it to me about uh, Alex Jones. And Alex is actually say, uh, pay, playing a clip where last month, uh, President Putin comes on, speaks to journalists, and tells them just how serious the situation is and that somebody needs to wake up before we end up into a nuclear war. That's how bad this is, guys. It is extremely serious. This is no game at all that's going on here. All right, now, uh, this here, I want to bring the video out. This is from that video there. We're going to look at this video. Then we're going to drop out of the PowerPoint presentation. I want to show you what's actually going on. And then we're going to back up a little bit in the history to see what's been being planned from the very beginning here that we brought out a couple of months ago here on Israeli News Live as well. Anyway, in the article here, Putin loses it, warns journalists of war. He says, I don't know how to get through to you people. And then, of course, we have the video as well. Vladimir Putin has finally taken the kid gloves off, the article states. Uh, the Russian president was meeting with foreign journalists at the conclusion of the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum on June 17th when he left no one in any doubt that the world is headed down a course which could lead to nuclear war. All right, let's take a look at this video here, and I'll try to stop it if I can. Uh, but let me just read the first part here. This is what starts off. The Iranian threat does not exist, but the NATO missile defense system is being positioned in Europe. Let's see what President Putin has to say here at this meeting here. All right. All right. That means we uh, were right when we said that their reasons are not genuine. They were not being open with us. Now, this is where the, the, the missiles were placed in, uh, I believe that's in Armenia, and they were using it to justify to say that this is because of a threat of Iran. And, of course, Iran is really not the threat. Uh, it's got a 500-kilometer uh, range as it is, but uh, he's going to go into this that he knows that, that that's going to change, okay? 
So he says, always referring to the Iranian threat in order to justify this system. Once again, they lied to us. Now the system is functioning and being loaded with missiles. As you journalists should know, these missiles are put into capsules which are used uh, in the Tomahawk long-range missile system. Okay. So these are being loaded with missiles that can penetrate territories within a 500 kilometer range. But we know that technology is advanced and we know in which year the U.S. will accomplish the next missile. This missile will be able to penetrate distances up to 1,000 kilometers and then even further. And from that moment on, they will start to directly threaten Russia. We know year by year what's going, on to, what's going to happen and they know that we know. It's only you that tell, tell, tell tall tales and you buy it and spread it to the citizens of your countries. Your people in turn do not feel a sense of the impending danger. This is what worries me. How do you not understand that the world is being pulled into an irreversible direction? Now, I want to tell you something, guys. Let me, let me see if I think he's almost finished here. While they pretend that nothing's going on, I don't know how to get through to you anymore. All right. Guys, I'm going to tell you something. I've never seen this man so sincere in what he's saying. You know, when you, and I'm not, I'm not a, an analyst. I'm not a psychological, psychological analyst or, or can tell you by someone's, the way they talk or whatever, you know, what they're supposed to be feeling or whatever. But one thing I can tell you, though, is when I listen to what this man says and I watch the way he is expressing himself, it is obvious that he's very concerned and that he doesn't want it to go that direction. Now, we're fixing to look at this next report here. Before I go, in, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll probably just finish this and then we'll go into what's actually happening on the ground right now. But on this one right here, NATO puts troops near Kaliningrad. I have to say as well that we know that um, Russia, Kaliningrad, by the way, uh, let, me, let me first show you here on the screen here. Uh, those of you that are watching on live stream, whichever way you're doing it here, I, right now what we have here, this is Poland right here. I'm actually right here at the yellow star here on the map. I don't know if you can see that there. I'm in Prague. Uh, and Kaliningrad is a little small Russian province right here. It's something that Russia still has to this day. This is also where they have one of their largest Navy fleets uh, in, in the, uh, the Baltic fleet is stationed right here. Now, NATO has been doing major war games all in this area. And since those war games really began to get beefed up and all this kind of stuff here, Russia started building up its own forces because it feared what would happen to its own naval fleet. Now, of course, President Obama is going to say the other way around. Well, we had to put our NATO troops here because Russia's got that there, the naval base there. Russia's always had the naval base there. And the funny thing is, as I have done the investigative work on this, I have watched to see who does what when. Obama makes it look that well, Russia is doing all these war games here, so we have to put our NATO troops in. It's actually the other way around. Look at the time dates on the different articles of what happens. You'll see. It's actually Obama's lying to the American people. It's, it's the other way around. He's always had a Navy base here. That was never a problem for Europe before. Where the problem comes in is when suddenly we're getting all these war games. So Russia, and all you got to do is look at time dates and stamps on your news footages and stuff. He begins to do a build up and do war games here as well. Now, sudden, suddenly, uh, NATO is pretending like, well, Russia's got this great big buildup. We've got to do a buildup as well. So what do they do? Near Kaliningrad, that's the part for Russia right there, they send in on July 6th, Polish Defense Minister Anthony uh, Ma uh, Makarevich said four battalions NATO commanded located in Poland, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania will be located in the city of uh, Elblog, 
in northern Poland at a distance of 100 kilometers from the Russian Kaliningrad, according to Anthony uh, um, Makarovka. Data battalion groups can counter the threat not only uh, on land but also in uh, in the airspace, as well as possess the intelligence systems. The head of Polish Ministry of Defense said NATO's decision to deploy troops on the eastern flank in order to prevent existing threat is the first step in a plan to strengthen the presence of the most powerful, uh, um, I should say, military alliance on the planet. In the region, strengthening the presence of NATO forces in Eastern Europe, especially in Poland and the three Baltic states, has led to an increase uh, in tensions with Moscow. Now, let me show you something else, guys. All right, let me uh, get this over here back to the map. Now, the thing is, is this is not not only has NATO put this here. This was just announced two days ago. At the same time, while NATO is putting all these troops here in Poland, Lithuania, and beefing up everything, Kiev is making this advance there to Donbass, and you're fixing to find out how heavy that advance is. We've got the live footage here to show you. It's major, guys. It's major what's going on in Ukraine right now. That's, that's the melting pot, all right? Now, uh, a, a precious, I believe it was a sister, forgive me, sis or brother, if I get it wrong here, uh, from Serbia sent me a message the other day, I brought that news to you guys, that in Estonia, which is right up here at the top of your screen, you can see a lake right here. If I got it on uh, the way I did it here. You may not see it very well. But anyway, in Estonia right here on the Narva River, which is, a, is actually at the very top of there, that's right there on the borderline there, there was a man there in Estonia that sent back a message to get the message to me that there were over a, what he could estimate about one. 100 NATO tanks and armored personnel carrier right here. Now, you don't see it in this particular screen here, but right here just across there about a 50 mile distance happens to be St. Petersburg. So we've got a massive troop build up here and the Polish guy says it in the article there. Now that was a Russian article, okay? So we translated it into English, all right? And he also said they're in Latvia, Lithuania, of course, and Poland. In Poland, they're built up right there on the border to Kaliningrad. Now, suddenly, all this extra buildups are being done. Now, this one in Estonia here, it's on the Narva River. Now, the point is, guys, is if it's on the Narva River, there's, this, this, is, this is not a NATO exercise. Okay, maybe here next to Kaliningrad, all right, we could say, justify NATO's got an exercise maybe going on, all right? All right, we could maybe say that. But when you're on the Narva River, how do you do an exercise when you're sitting on the river? The guy says they're on the river, and the river is shallow enough for the tanks to cross, all right? He said at the point where they were all uh, there together. Now, isn't it not strange that NATO's doing this buildup two days ago at the same time when Kiev... Uh, which is the capital of Ukraine, is sending, Poroshenko, the, the, the so-called president of, of Ukraine now, is sending in massive amounts of troops and everything else into uh, eastern Ukraine. And in one report I saw, even uh, near Crimea. Uh, I don't know if this is for sure or not on the Crimean one. Uh, so I'm not going to jump in there. Now, Ukraine is right here, though. Right here on your map here. This is Ukraine, all of Ukraine. Donsk is well over here to the bottom right-hand side here. All right. And Luhansk, uh, you don't see Luhansk on the screen there, but it's, it's all here on the far eastern side. And they're advancing all the way over here, getting ready to do a conflict in this area here. Guys, it is, could easily spiral out of control. And again, today, today, Vladimir Putin on the phone with Merkel, uh, Zarkozy, trying to get them to stop what's going on before it gets out of control. Now... Russia, uh, July 5th, 2016, eyes the Baltic as Putin digs in for a standoff with NATO. This is reported on uh, Haaretz, Israeli news. They reported, of course, they were getting it from Reuters, on the curbside outside the civilian airport in Kaliningrad, Russia's Baltic Sea outpost, a group of about 20 servicemen in Russian Navy uniforms lined up earlier this month waiting for a bus to take them to their base. We are an additional reinforcement, one of the young men who said he and his colleagues had flown in that day told Reuters as they waited on the rain-soaked tarmac. He gave no further details. Russian 
and NATO are reaching build up their military capabilities across Eastern Europe and spurred by the conflict in Ukraine, which has prompted officials on both sides to talk on the risk of a new Cold War style confrontation. Guys, if Kiev blows up, it's not going to be a Cold War. It's going to be a, it's going to be a hot war. Okay. Now, this is another article that's a good example of when Russia's doing the buildup. Like I said, all you got to do is a little bit of homework and you can find out who does the, who did the first moves and stuff. Now, NATO is always going to say they did it because why? Well, Russia, they said, was in Ukraine. Russia didn't have to be in Ukraine to begin with. Ukraine had a president that was loyal to the Russian Federation. Russia had no need to be there in Ukraine. Russia has always had a military presence in Crimea. That was that was part of the agreement. 20,000, up to 20,000 military members they could have in Crimea. They maintained that. But when the neo-Nazis got going, this is when the country got overthrown. And, you know, I have to tell you guys, I love America. That's my home. That's where I was born. But I guarantee you one thing, this last administration over the last eight years done a lot of damage and caused a lot of problems that I don't think other administrations would be doing. I don't think we would have the problems that we're having today with Russia if we didn't have the administration that we have in now. And even, and, and I'm not in for the politics and, uh, or any of this thing here. I, I, like I said, I've stated before, I voted for Christ. I got to win. I'm not going to worry about that. I've made my, my vote. All right. But, you know, it, it, at least when I look at Donald Trump, and he may be one of the insiders as well. I can't say he's any better than the rest of them, but one thing's for sure, at least he says he'll, he'll make a relationship with Russia work. That's the way it should be, guys. All right, enough of that. Let's, let's get right into this. All right, this is the article that I shared with you the other day. Moscow concerned with buildup of Ukraine armed forces in Donbass. Uh, this was uh, on uh, TASS, uh, the Russian language, uh, Eng or, excuse me, English, Russian, excuse me, English language of TASS, July 6, 2016. All right, they were talking about the armed forces being brought in. Now, let me take you to what is actually going on as we speak right now so that you guys can see what's, what's happening here. All right, now this here, I'm using Google Translate for you so you can see it. So I don't have time to sit here and brush up the, uh, the Russian, which my wife would be the one that brushes this up for me. Uh, but at least to give you an idea of what's going on. July the 8th, message from the militia, July 8th, 2016. Guys, that's today, all right? This was at 2356. This happened, guys. Uh, this update here for, for us was only, uh, oh gosh, what, 35, 40 minutes ago, all right? This is one of the late last updates here. Let's, let's go down and let's see what this update is here. All right. He says, um, the, the, let's see, the uh, APU put streamers on the homes of the civilians not skimping on the gr uh, grenade while the poles keep Ukrainians a shift. Hang on, guys. Sorry about this. Um, Ukraine military have tried to move the positions of the army under the DNI Z uh, Zayatsov village on the onslaught of the enemy was, was met by fire in the evening. Passerby is found on the wall of a house near the bus station of Gr Golovka signal beacon on the device that causes the fire. Okay, hang on. Um, this again, uh, the first Ukrainian world in Kiev, APU chaos, rotting corpses, security forces. Uh, armed forces of Ukraine continue to pull heavy weapons to the demarcation line despite the Minsk agreement while counting the militia killed and injured by action of the security forces of the Ukraine party mask their losses in forests and suburb towns. The shelling in Donetsk People's uh, Republic have begun last night. During the night, uh, the Ukraine army released the outskirts of Donetsk Harlivka. Uh, yeah, I can't pronounce that one there. Uh, in southern villages of the Republic and uh, Sahanka, uh, etc. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, this one here is July 8th as well. This was at 2100 hours, 2104. 200 shots uh, were, were fired during this time. They're showing you photos of what's going on. Uh, hit about the war in Donbass, fire flashes from the sky fall on the residents um, in, in that particular area there. Um, 
It says in the air, the, the smell of Donbass is clearly war. Indirectly confirmed, this is the speaker of the uh, Verko, Verkanova Rada of Andrea Perubi, and who suddenly announced a possible strengthening of the fighting in Donbass in the coming months. It is, of course, it is, it is, a, it, it is, of course, or in other words, they have, of course, blamed Russia for it. Uh, Let's see, there was one spot here earlier. Let me, let me, I gotta get it down to where I can see this a little bit better. Go back to the default here on the size here. But I've actually got one spot in here where they talk about the tanks as well. Uh, okay, now this is July 6th. Security forces posted at Recreation Center near the village of Lugansk. About 80 soldiers speaking in English. All right, now this is bad, guys. This was announced today at a briefing in uh, Lugansk's inform spokesman of the People's Militia, Major Andrew uh, Mark Markoka. He noted that the Ukrainian leadership still continues to use military help from Western patrons as well as uh, to, to use the services of foreign mercenaries. So our intelligence establishes that on July 4th through the station of Alder. Okay, 80 English-speaking soldiers, roughly. That's what they're saying. This was two days ago. And, and maybe this helps to understand why Putin is saying this could destabilize the entire region. Because they're talking about American and British soldiers involved in this. Mercenaries, as they call them. I've actually seen the footage myself. I've actually seen the footage because when you go to study in Russian and, and Ukrainian type news and you look at these things, it's out there, guys. You just have to search it. It, it takes a lot of work. I have to have my wife's help and stuff like this because she speaks Russian. Uh, she speaks it fluently. She, she reads it. She understands it, everything. All right, here's you another one. Again, July the 6th at 10.02 a.m., uh, uh, Ukrainian security forces in the late evening on the, on the eve fired heavy weapons. Um, that's just the firing of the weapons there. I wanted to find, here we go, we got one of the tanks here. Um, oh gosh, guys, I, I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't get a chance to go through this one here, but I, there's one spot on here where they actually are talking about the tanks that they're moving in, uh, the heavy equipment and things of that nature there. Um, let me go back here. Okay, well, it's right here. Armed forces of Ukraine continue to pull heavy weapons to the demarcation line despite the Minsk agreements. Uh, they don't say in that one there, but I actually found one in this here where they speak about what they brought up to the demarcation line, and it was tanks. And I just want to see here, because we're still looking at July 8th. Um, and... But, you know, the, the whole point th is, is bad. OSCE, the, the photograph you're seeing here, these are the observers here, guys. And this is one of the things that broke some of this news here. The OSCE are actually reporting this as well, that there is a major buildup uh, of, of a military presence. And of course, Russia would, would know firsthand as well what's going on here. And if you want to look at this yourself, let me just show, take you to what, what we uh, are using right here. I believe this is the one here. Let me just double check it. Yes, this is the one. Um, and then this way you guys can see it as well on your own screen here. Um, in the, uh, if you type in A-N-T-I-M-A-Y-D-A-N dot info, forward slash S-V-O-D-K-I underscore O-T underscore O-P-O-L-C-H-E-N-I-Y-A. Of course, maybe that'll get you there. <laughs> I hate to tell you how to do it, guys. Anyway, but maybe the website itself will actually get you to what's going on here. It's bad. Guys, it's bad. I mean, we are we are in a in a in a serious situation and uh, this is what uh, Vladimir Putin is saying right now to the French president, as well as uh, Merkel, the Germ German chancellor of, of Germany. Do something before this higher, entire region becomes destabilized. My concern is it's not going to change. Now, let's go back uh, to what we were doing here. I, I really got to bring this out to you here because uh, what I want to share with you as well, this is something that's been going on for a while, guys. This is not something that is new. This has been going on for a while. I brought this out not long ago, March the 10th, 2016, 
Wasn't long after this particular date here, Ukraine and Turkey have agreed to work together to return Crimea. All right, this was in Ukrainian uh, language, which is very similar to the Russian language. It says, uh, Turkey will always support the territorial integrity of Ukraine, including that of Crimea. Russia declares that it has come to Syria at the invitation of the government, and I wonder at whose invitation they came to Ukraine. Now, this is uh, Erdogan, President Erdogan of Turkey, saying this about Russia. He says that he knows that, that uh, Mahmoud Abbas, uh, no, I'm sorry, not Mahmoud, uh, Bashar al-Assad invited him to, to Syria, but he wants to know who invited him to Ukraine. Well, I thought, thought that was kind of a smart aleck kind of comment because he was invited to Ukraine by the former president of Ukraine when they were going through the coup trying to overthrow him when he was still technically the president. So he did come there at the invitation. In fact, they had to rescue the man in the middle of the night before he was murdered by this neo-Nazi bunch of thugs that uh, Petro Poroshenko uh, has running around in his country. So yes, he was invited. Petro Poroshenko was not the president of the country at that time. Anyway, it says, uh, uh, so Poroshenko makes this statement. He says, we will make joint efforts to bring back Crimea and one of the most important manifestations of a deepening of a strategic partnership should be enhanced in cooperation, coordination, and development of the contractual framework in the field of defense and security. Poroshenko made that statement there. Now, guys, let me tell you something. The whole thing about this, it, it went deeper. Uh, it, it definitely went deeper because in, in one statement in there, Erdogan says uh, to Poroshenko, or Poroshenko says about Erdogan in the meeting that he had there, that they had already been in contact with higher powers of the world. Uh, not mentioning NATO at that particular point, but we know as the United States that has their back and that it would be a strategic strike to take back Crimea. I am wondering if this is not what we're seeing now. Why are we seeing a buildup of forces by NATO at the same time that the Ukrainians are also building up their own forces there near Donbass and, and Luhansk? It's a very serious situation, guys. And in this article here, I found on the Russian news as well, 2016 here. I didn't get the month on it, but it was on ruspravda.info. Uh, is U.S. going to bomb its own embassy in Kiev? And the guy in this article here states that he believes that, yes, they were going to do that as a way to justify getting NATO troops in, inside of Ukraine to help fight the war there and that they would blame it on, uh, on Russia for the bombing, and they would actually use a Russian bomber to do it with, because Kiev does have some of Russia's own bombers. And that's what he states. In fact, he even goes even further and says that they'll do it like America did on 9-11 and took down the Twin Towers, again, indicting the United States administration for its own destruction on its own property. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching. Israeli News Live. Pray, guys, it's a time. If you don't know Yeshua, I encourage you to get to know him now. We're in a late hour. And let's just pray that this is not the time. Let's pray that this is one of the rumors of wars and not the actual real deal. I'm Stephen Benoon. Lahalatov.